So, this should we should be live, everybody. Hello, America. Hello, all of you here at Western Kentucky University. We are going to continue our class this continue this semester, uh, learning some more about accounting stuff. Last class period, we learned about accounting terms. Um, and unfortunately, as I was telling everybody before, just before uh, videotaping, that uh, the technology didn't work as I was expecting it to. The first couple of classes, which I did record, but I'm probably not going to post on YouTube. So I've recorded some alternatives. And those are there, and I might redo this next year to kind of get more live courses. Okay. So uh, let's review just briefly, shall we? Just to kind of see if, see if we learned anything from last class period. Um, what is accounting used for? Uh, you are Nate. Nate, what's accounting used for? Oh, man. I gave you the answer. I need you to remember that. Decision making. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. It's for decision making. Accounting is used for decision making and a whole lot more. Um, what did I also want to talk about? I wanted to talk, let's, we can review very quickly. What's GAAP stand for? Um, GAAP. Grace. Is Grace here? Grace is not here. Connor, what's GAAP stand for? Generally accepted accounting principles. What's FASB stand for? Ellen. Is Ellen here? No, Ellen's not here. Uh, Blake, FASB. Financial Accounting Standards Board. What's CPA stand for? Skyla. For Skyla? Certified Public Accountant. Perfect. What's a, uh, tell me something about the standards for managerial accounting. Gallon. Gallon here. Gallon may or may not here. Gatlin not here. Jackson. Thank heaven. There's no gap, no rules for managerial accounting. What's CMA stand for? Uh, Kenzie. Certified management accountant. Very good. Which one ha is a license? CPA or CMA? Uh, Danny. Where's Danny? CPA. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What's a sole proprietorship? Corey. Say again. Owned by one person. Uh, Hermes, what, tell me about a partnership. Owned by two or more people. Owned by two or more people. Uh, Kim might not be here. Is Kim here? Kim is not here. Say, what's a corporation? Owned by stockholders. Is that, what you're, is that what you have written there? Yeah? What do I got in my notes? A business organized as a separate legal entity. If you watch my, you might find it interesting to go back and watch the video that I, it's only 30 minutes long, the one that I just recorded at home. But yeah, own, it's a, a separate legal entity where owners cannot be sued. Okay, beautiful. Let's talk about different types of, Oh, no, no, no. Two more things, right? What's an investor? Uh, Hayden Robertson. Not here. Olivia, what's an uh, investor? Say again. Anyone that's a part owner of a company. What's a creditor then? What's a creditor? A uh, sailor. Yeah, someone loaning money, stereotypically a bank, but right? stereotypically a bank. It wouldn't, you know, it could be Uncle Guido, you know, but uh, most stereotypically a bank. So far, we're looking good here. Cam, way to go, Cam. Hope it doesn't automatically turn off. Maybe more sophisticated software doesn't turn off automatically. Oh, and then we talked about financing, investing, and operating activities. <clears throat> Stella, have I, are you, did I just talk to Stella? 
That was you. That was Olivia. So Stella is next to Olivia. How exciting. Stella, which one is most frequently done in an organization? A financing activity, an investing activity, or an operating activity? Operating, operating activity. Correct the answer. So it's actually, they're in reverse order, actually, in terms of that. So what is an operating activity? Uh, is Evan here? Evan Sopko. Evan is here. Where's Evan? Talk to me, man. Oh, you don't know. You weren't here last class period. Watch the video, though. You can get the notes, okay? Because it's now on YouTube. You, you got the email? Okay? So there'll be a playlist of all classes all semester. So check it out. Check it out. You're just not used to this, are you? Like, how many of your, how many of your accounting professors have ever had a YouTube channel? Of course, you've never had an accounting professor before, probably. Well, so that makes it really easy. That makes it kind of, kind of just kind of, I mean, have you had an accounting professor before that, that, uh, no, that had a YouTube channel? Have you had any professor before that had a YouTube channel? Be the first. I'll be your first subscription yeah. ever? Like, oh, like first YouTube account you've ever subscribed to or just first professor? No, I'm making that one in like Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Again, the hope is all semester, I'll have YouTube content for you from this, from this very semester, from this very class. And again, given how many people are missing today, hopefully that's a good thing. Hopefully it doesn't motivate them to miss, but hey. Uh, let me ask this, Cars, Carson's not here. Emma, Emma Taylor, how are you? Are you excited? What are operating activities? That sounds perfect. That sounds like something I would say. Transactions that relate to the operations of a company. Beautiful. August, what is uh, investing activity? Okay. In transactions involving something that the business uses long term. What is a financing activity then? Uh, Jaron. Is Jaron here? Jaron should be here. Jaron Stites. No, 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 no. Financing activity. Oh, that is incorrect. That is incorrect. Transactions, financing activities are transactions with investors and creditors. You get, You read me the perfect answer for an operating activity. So, you got the notes in the wrong spot. Yep, 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 yep. You read me the perfect answer, perfectly correct answer for a operating activity. So kind of, kind of reverse those. Okay. okay. Piece of cake, walk in the park. Easiest falling off lot. Questions, comments, concerns, random thoughts. I suppose I should show up on video after a while. That's probably a little creepy, right? Hello. Uh, I and this will be very entertaining to see what that looks like on video. Uh, questions, comments, concerns, random thoughts. Another question class going too fast too slow or just right just perfect thank you thank you so let's move learn some new stuff let's learn some new stuff then and there are different types of accounts and these do you remember i just talked you are jaron correct that i just talked to you were jaron uh veronica where's veronica veronica do you remember when the first accounting textbook was written 1494, very, very close. Very, very close. 1494, close enough for government work. And we are at a uh, government institution. 1494, you remember who? Italian guy, good start. Italian guy knew Leonardo da Vinci. Joseph, you got me, got my back. Who wrote it? Italian guy. Top math to Leonardo da Vinci. Pacioli was his name. And so uh, not that that's important. It, won't, it will not show up on an exam, I'm pretty darn sure. <clears throat> but this is where he started, right? What is the easiest thing to see in any organization? It is the stuff that they have on hand, right? So imagine... You own a store. What's the easiest thing to kind of see and kind of count in that 
place of business, it is what do we got on the shelves? And so those are assets. Okay? Assets is the name for stuff on the shelves. Wow. Okay. Stuff on the shelves are assets. <clears throat> this this camera seems to be a little bit more wide angle than the default one. Assets. <clears throat> so assets are the total resources of the company. The total resources of the company. And what's that include? What's that include? So think about the store that you own and are operating. The building, the cash, and the cash, the building, the stock. We're going to use the word inventory to describe that stock. So building, cash, inventory, supplies, equipment, land. And investments. Are you writing all these down? I'm gonna about the. Uh, you got them all written down. All right. Beautiful. I just talked to Joseph. Did I? Did, are you Joseph? I just talked to you. Landon, what are what are assets? Anything? Total resources of the company. Name one. Ryan. Building and Blaine. Another one. Where's Blaine at? Thank you. Blaine, inventory. Katie did not hear. Uh, Ian. Gosh, very good. Where's Ian? Thank you. Peyton, name another. Supplies, beautiful. Nate. Where is the, where's Nate? What do you got? Equipment, very good. We're, are we missing anything? We're missing at least one. Uh, Sarah is not here. Grace is not here. Connor. You got investments. I think that might be all of them. I think that might be all of them. So double check your list. I got cash, equipment, supplies, inventory, building, land, investments. All those things are examples of assets. Okay. Next, we are going to talk about liabilities. Liabilities. That is the amount owed to creditors, okay? That is the amount or amounts. It can be more than, you can owe more than one creditor. So amounts, plural, owed to creditors. <clears throat> and usually a distinguishing feature of these loans, right, is that they are due on a particular date or buy it to a particular date. You, you think about your car loan. Can you pay your car loan back just whenever you want? That's, well, that's, that's why you got a loan. So, but you owe a, a fixed amount every month. And just as significantly, there's a time at which you must have that whole thing paid back by, right? There's a time at which, and that's really what you're kind of working towards. So. That is a defining characteristic of a loan, of, a, of an amount owed to a creditor. So amounts can be owed to banks, obvious one. But there are some other ones that are not quite as obvious, such as uh, suppliers. Sometimes suppliers will provide you stuff and then you owe them money. Are you writing this down? Suppliers. Employees, you accumulate loans to your employees, don't you, if they're working for you and you haven't paid them yet. Utility companies and government, i.e. taxes. So there's five examples that I've now given you of uh, possible creditors. Employees, utility company, utility company, okay? So what do you got? Uh, Ellen, not here. 
Blake Thompson, what do you got? What is a uh, liability? Is Blake? Amount owed to creditors. Beautiful. Give me an example. Skyla. Thanks. Another example. Gatlin. Not here. Jackson. Suppliers. Another example. Kinsey. Employees. Where's Kinsey? Thank you. Uh, Danny. Utility companies. And last but not least, uh, Corey. You're the government taxes. You kind of owe them, don't you? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Does that make sense so far? So far, so good. Piece of cake, walk in the park. Easy as falling off a log. Are we still recording? Looks like it. Have you seen any falling off of this when I walk around? No, no. Because you can kind of see it fairly well, I think, from there. Um, hopefully, it's, and I'll, I guess I'll try not to go to the back of the classroom just too darn much. But three. Stockholders, equity. Now, the name of this account changes if depending upon if it is a um, corporation or not. It's owner's equity if it's a uh, proprietorship. It is stockholders' equity if it is a corporation, okay? Stockholders' equity, but we're going to call it stockholders' equity because the uh, subcategories don't make sense otherwise. But this is, by definition, simply the owner's claims to resources. The owner's claims to resources, okay? The owner's claims to resources. And, I, and just to have you make that um, clear to you, given the words on the board, what do you think I just wrote on the board? Uh, Corey, where's Corey? I just asked you, you don't want to ask, answer another one. Are you sure? Hmm. That's sad. Hermes. What's that mean? A equals L plus E. Not, but I wouldn't use the word and. I would use the word plus. Okay, liabilities equals, or assets equals liabilities plus equity. Okay, and this actually. I mean, we're jumping ahead a little bit. We'll review this here in, in, in a very short period of time. But this, then, is what is known as the uh, balance sheet, which is one of the financial statements that a, public, a publicly owned uh, company must present. So this is literally... So these are pretty darned important concepts because these concepts are really the foundation of the um, balance sheet. And here we're going to have two sub-elements of stockholders' equity. We've got common stock and retained... Retained earnings. What is common stock? Anybody have a thought? When you own, when I own, if you go out and buy a piece of Tesla, we talked about Tesla last class period. If you go out and buy a piece of Tesla, what are you buying? Shares of common stock, usually. That's what it's called. You buy a share of stock. The, the kind of the more fancy name for that is common stock, which is uh, distinct from, I think it's called preferred stock, uh, which is just a different animal. So the vast majority, when you go out and buy stuff, something and buy a piece of a company, whether that be Tesla or Apple, Coca-Cola, 
American Airlines, whatever you want to buy a piece of, you're buying shares of common stock. Google, if you want to buy Google, how much are you paying for one share of common stock? A lot. It's probably over $1,000 these days. I'd have to go check. I, I, have, I think I have two shares of Google stock. I bought one, and then the stock split. And, and a company will sometimes do that, just split the stock, meaning for every one share of stock that somebody owns, they now own two. And they do that to actually try and make the stock more affordable so it's easier to buy one share. But I bought one share of Google stock back at a time when it was much cheaper. And it splits, so I now own two shares of common stock. But that's what you buy when you buy uh, a share of, or, you know, part of a publicly traded org organization. Retained earnings, then, is something quite distinct from that. Retained earnings is accumulated profit. Retained earnings is accumulated profit. Common stock, let me, and I can provide this. This is investments by owners. Common stock is investments by owners because that's what you're becoming when you buy a share of stock. Investments by owners. Retained earnings is accumulated profit. And then what do you have as the definition of stockholders' equity? Say, what do you have as the definition of stockholders' equity? Perfect. Sounds like something I would say. Owners claims to resources. Okay. <clears throat> there we've talked about the balance sheet. Okay. Let's move on. Next page of the notes. How do you like the How do you like the book so far? You, you like taking notes in the book? Awesome. Awesome. Uh, and so uh, if you are in my class, this little, the handy handbook's available on Blackboard. Although I have had people before and I've emailed it to people. If, you, if you're out there just in YouTube viewing land and would like this, send me an email and I can get that to you. That has happened before, uh, believe it or not, in other classes. Because <clears throat> there are people in the world who want to learn accounting because they figure it's going to help them with their job. So there we are. So there are five types of accounts. So we're these are this is one, two, three, four. One, two, three, and we need to do four and five. Four, five. We'll see how this comes out so diagonal on the uh, on the video. Revenues and expenses. Revenues and expenses. Let me see how that looks here. Revenues and expenses. So let's go back this way. Revenues and expenses. I think you might be able to see that. It's kind of an odd angle, but I tried to write big. Revenues are the amounts received from selling stuff. So revenues are the amounts received from selling stuff. So it's received from customer, okay? Amounts received from selling stuff. And uh, very simplistically, there's two types of stuff you can sell. Products and services. Right? Products and services. Apple, well actually Tesla's a better example. Does Tesla sell product or service? Uh, Hayden, is Hayden here? No, Hayden. It's like I got to be up here looking at my uh, list of who's here in order. Yeah, Hayden's not here. Olivia, how are you? Look at this. Did I or did I not promise on the first day of class that I was going to try to talk to everybody at least once this semester? How am I doing so far? Probably better than you wish I was doing. Uh, if truth be told. Um, but Tesla, have you heard of Tesla? Do they sell products or services? Are you asking me or tell you? Both. Why? What do they sell? 
when you think of Tesla, what do you think of? Cars. Is that a product or a service? Product. Done. Apple. Do they sell a product or a service? I thought about this. I was, I think, I was trying to think about this live. That's a great question. What is a service? Well, I, I want you to think about it. Like, like, yeah. What is a service? What? How would you define a service? I know you're asking me. That's precisely correct. Would ah, just Tesla fix cars? But usually, usually is it the is it the car manufacturer who fixes them? Fixes them? Yeah, it's the stereotypically it's a service center that fixes them, which might be wholly independent of the of the right. Yeah, like like if you think about other cars, that the dealership is not you know the the Ram dealership that I go to to have the oil change in my Ram pickup is not owned by you know it's owned separately. Okay, there were several hands up. Uh, what did you want to say? The Tesla Chargers. That's that's a great question. Do you think that's a product or a service? What do you think? I think electricity is a product. Yeah, but you're but 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 what are you putting in there? Electricity. Electricity is stuff that you can measure. So I actually kind of think of that as a product. Although, I mean, you don't have to agree with me. And in fact, Tesla may or may not agree with me. But my, I would categorize that personally as a product that's selling you something that's measurable and usable and what have you. What's a service then? Go ahead. I just, just like a, something that someone can do for you. It's something somebody's doing for me, yeah. Especially again, you're buying if you're doing it yourself. Is it somebody doing it for you? No. So that's oh, is that a reason why you think it's a product, not yeah. a service? <laughs> that you think it's a product, not a service, because you're you're doing it yourself. So something. What do you think? What are things that people do for me? Education. Education is a service. What other things do people do for me? Businesses do for me. Companies that prepare you, what, what were you going to say? Taxes. taxes. So companies that prepare your taxes for you. Service. Accounting is a service. Your doctor provides a service. Um, your lawyer provides a service. The plumber, your electrician, provides services. It's complicated. I was thinking about, like, I got a text uh, just before class today. We have, we had our internet speed upgraded because it turns out the equipment attached to our house was really old, like 15 years, 10, 15 years old. And so we were actually not getting the internet we were paying for. And so a guy came out a couple of weeks ago on a, one of those cold days that was too cold and he replaced our equipment outside and then ran cable basically alongside our house and across my driveway to get from where they you know, where the internet source is to the box that's connected to our house. And so that internet is a product, isn't it? That internet is a product. But today, sometime today, I'm eager to go home and see what my yard looks like now. But sometime today, people came and buried that cable because they had to run it under our driveway. That process right there the process of burying a cable underground and putting it under our driveway, that is a service, right? That's a service. That's somebody did something they did for us to put that cable under the ground. Okay, so, so that one then is a bit of both. That particular transaction is a bit of both. Um, but ultimately, the product that we're paying for, in fact, the only thing we're paying for, right, is the monthly internet bill. So that's a product, I think. Yeah. I still think that, yeah, I think that that would be a product to me, in my mind. And again, maybe everybody's definition isn't quite the same, but product. What well, it's another service. I think we're coming up, we're having a harder time coming up with services. 
It's another service. Education, hospital, lawyers, accountants, plumbing, electricity, getting a haircut. Police officer. There we are. Lots of them. Yeah. Mechanics. Lots of people. Actually, services are becoming more and more prominent in in our world, right? As heck, we have a lady who comes and helps clean our home once a month. That's providing a service. And so uh, lots and lots of companies make services. So revenues can be either from selling a product or providing a service, okay? And then expenses are costs or resources used when providing costs or resources used when providing products and services. Yes, sir? We'll talk about that. Let's, let's finish defining this, and then it's very important for you to understand the difference, because there's very clear differences between those two. <clears throat> so, but let's, let's finish this first, and then we'll get to that question, okay? So expenses are costs or resources used when providing products and services, such as, what would those be? Salaries. Actually, in this case, it can be the cost of providing the service of uh, health care includes the cost of that building that you go visit that doctor. Right? So salaries, rent, supplies, utilities, all of the above. Okay. And then one more definition, and then we'll come to this question, which is a very, very important question of what's the difference between expenses and liability. So profit equals revenues minus expenses. Okay. Profit equals revenue minus expenses. And this then is the second the second financial statement. The income statement is what it's called. <clears throat> so that goes to show just how darned important these concepts are. And it's also clear that that expenses have to be different than liabilities, don't they? Because they really go on two different, to two different places. <clears throat> so what do you have as your definition for liability? Okay. And then what do you have for expenses? So the amount you owe on your car, you owe, you owe, you have a car, you owe a little bit of money on it. Well, you are you have a very good dad, but you can imagine that concept, right? You can imagine that. I mean, every car I've ever owned, I owed money on. Okay, the amount that you owe. So let's say you still owe five thousand dollars on this car. That $5,000 is in the liability. Okay. That $5,000 is the liability. What is an expense is this month I paid $500. That's my monthly expense to repay that loan was $500 this month. That is an expense. Okay. That make, hopefully that's really helpful. So this is how much I owe. This is, this is, a good way to think about it is this is cash leaving my pocket. Okay? This, that's a good concept because you want to understand that conceptual difference. And it's super important. They're clearly two separate things. Is that helpful? Great question, though, because you need to have that all straight. Any other questions? You need to have that straight. Okay? And what is profit? Yeah, it's, it's really math. 
you know, I've, I've had students at times struggle with, well, what's that mean? It means nothing more and nothing less than the description of math. It's just a description of math. How much do we owe on this car? That's just math, right? The liability, the liability of car owners, liability is associated with buying a car is just math. How much money is remaining on my loan? That is my liability. That's my liability. Excuse me. Profit. How much? What's my profit this month? It is simply revenue minus expenses. Just math. Just a description. You know, it's, a, it's a name that we give to a math calculator. Okay? That is meaningful. And if, and if you learn, learn almost, no, if you remember almost nothing else from the semester, <clears throat> excuse me, I want you to remember the difference between profit and revenue. Which one's bigger? Revenue. Okay. Revenues and profit are not the same thing. You can, you can find articles in the press where there is some confusion about this. Okay. <clears throat> now, I'm simplifying the world just a little bit. There, there are no accounting majors in here, so, uh, so, so you, you really won't learn this. But life is a little more complicated than what I'm simplifying out to be. Um, and then there's one more type of account, and that is dividends. And let's move this to here. Hello, dividends. Dividends. Say hello. Hello. No, didn't like that. It wasn't very funny. So, what are dividends? Dividends are cash payments to stockholders. Cash payments to stockholders. Okay. It's a great question. It comes kind of. How did we define retained earnings? Yeah, so 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 now so now let's work back this way, right? So here we've got profit is revenue minus expenses. One way to think about a retained earnings is as accumulated profit, right? It's, it's profit is for a period of time, like last year, how much profit did we make? Accumulated profit is, well, this is how much profit we've earned over the lifetime of our company. And it is out of retained earnings. Let me use a different color. It is out of retained earnings that dividends are paid. So it's not, so it's, your answer is partly right, right? Your, or your thought is partly right. Yes, it kind of comes, it doesn't come from profit this period. It comes from accumulated profit over time. <clears throat> and the critical thing to think about, I've got it all on its own over here. This is a special, kind of a special child, a special account. I don't know how to denote that. Just I'll put a dot here rather than a number, right? And that is dividends are not an expense. That's super. I can guarantee you there's going to be a test question about that at some point in time in your life this semester. Dividends are not an expense, right? They're not a cost of doing business. They are a redistribution of profit to the owner. Who pays, who gets paid dividends? Stockholders, if you own, some, some companies are more likely to pay dividends than others. Um, actually, that becomes an investing strategy, kind of making those sorts of choices. Some, you know, choosing a company that pays dividends can often be more 
profitable from an investing standpoint than not pay, companies that don't pay dividends. But if Tesla, if you buy a share of Tesla stock and they pay dividends, that means you're getting some money directly from Tesla only because you own a share of their stock. Yes, sir. You said, just to make sure I get my notes right, uh, dividends are not an expense, they're a redistribution of profit to the owners. The redistribution of profit to the owners. Redistribution of profit to the owners. Thank you. And please do ask. If you're, Please do ask. I'd hate for you to miss a question on a quiz or exam because you don't have the right notes. And this is one of the beautiful things about the Handy Handbook, right? You're all taking kind of the same notes at the same time. Okay, questions, what other questions, comments, concerns, random thoughts? So the interesting thing is, is I've talked about types of accounts and then uh, mentioned a couple of the types of financial statements. And we're gonna go backwards a bit later and we're gonna talk about the financial statements and identify those and then we'll define them in terms of the accounts. So you kind of see this stuff twice here, uh, bam, bam. So let's look at, is it on this page, what is an account? Okay, let's talk about that. <clears throat> and an account is an individual accounting record. An individual accounting record. These are all types of accounts, but a company will usually not record, you know, they will have lots of smaller accounts, right? Like assets, we've named a few of those. Let's, let's rename a few of them just to kind of remind ourselves. Um, we're a sailor. Did I just talk to sailor? I have not talked, recently talked to sailor. Give me an asset account. No, an, as, uh, an asset, a type of asset. Have we talked about types of assets? Yes, we did. Type of assets. Look back in your notes a page or two. And let me look at... Yes, although the first one I'm going to put here is cash, because that's a pretty easy one for students to understand. Let's talk about cash. Uh, we can talk about supplies, equipment, right? So accounts are, as I said, accounts are an individual accounting record, but we're not going to have one big record for assets. We're going to have smaller records with cash, with supplies, and equipment, because that's it's valuable to know those sub subcategories. And in fact, a company can have hundreds of accounts described, you know, in into as much detail as they would like to, to identify these subcategories. Okay. Liabilities, very often those are, well, it, it is useful to think about. It. And um, let's do this. I'm going to do this. Short ST is short term, LT long term. Okay. So, so it is, it is useful to recognize that. Um, we differentiate between short-term and long-term liabilities. A short-term liability is an amount that we, you know, we remember a liability is an amount that we owe. So a short-term liability is an amount that we owe that we expect to pay off in the next year, in less than a year. So if we think we're going to pay it off in less than a year, we would call that li liability short-term. And then you can take a pretty good guess as to what long term would be, can't you? Long term would be longer than a year. So most car loans, absolutely most house loans, home loans, liabilities longer than a year. And uh, so some names for these, some other names for the. And so now what I'm giving you our account names. Uh, Accounts 
payable, accounts payable, salaries payable. Because salaries become payable the day after you do the work in principle, right? You work for them, salaries get payable. And usually you only get paid once a week, maybe even sometimes I only I only get paid once a month. And so my, you know, my salary is accumulated as I work. So these are short term, right? They're going to be paid pretty quickly. A long term one would be a notes payable. And let me differentiate between those. Salaries payable, I think you all can understand. People owe you money. Accounts payable is something like a supplier gives you some or sells you 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 buy some parts from a supplier and they give you a month to pay a month or two months to pay for those supplies that relationship this mathematical relationship would be a accounts payable that supplier gives you parts you're going to give them money in return but you haven't yet so that becomes an account payable. Notes payable. This is your car loan and your home loan. That is a note from a bank's perspective. That is a note. And so that becomes a note payable. That's just kind of a fancy name for that. Okay. Oh, and then let's talk about these. Well, revenue. Revenue is revenue. Sometimes... That is the only account they got, revenue. Uh, but they can actually label it revenue from different sources. Uh, and then expenses. Advertising would be could be one. Uh, rent. Etc. And they can have accounts, again, for all of these, okay? They can have accounts for all of these. So so I've just put a lot of words on the board, right? Just put an awful lot of words on the board. What do those words, what am I talking about when I talk about those words? What do you wanna say? Something cool? No? Did I just talk, I just talked to Sailor. You are Sailor. Stella, where's Stella? How are you, Stella? Are you a little cold? What? Are you a little cold? Yeah. You, need, you want to come up and teach? Because, no, no, I mean, I'm starting to sweat a little bit because I'm exercising. Uh, but uh, actually, I'm just, I'm glad it's not so steaming hot in here like it was. I would rather have a little bit of coolness rather than, like, they were frying us to death last week. Oh, my goodness. They were frying us to death. So Stella, what question do you have for me? Or what answer? Would you rather give me a question or an answer? An answer? You're gonna make me come up with a question. Well, that's not fair. Um, what is an account? An account is an account, Dr. Fessler, of course. An individual accounting record. Does this make sense? I've thrown a lot of words at you, haven't I? Is there a word on the board that you don't know? REV, revenue. Yeah, it's just a short version of that. REV. Any other questions? You don't think so. Evan? Is Evan here? Evan, what, do you, what question do you have for me? A lot of words. You got them. You got them. I could ask. I could ask about any of these words on the next quiz, and you're going to be ready for it. I study the notes. You study the notes. Are you going to study the notes? What do you mean if I put it on the quiz? Well, we're going to have a quiz. I mean, it's, quiz is a pretty strong word, isn't it, for what that experience has been so far? I hope you felt that way. It's not. It's, I, I mean, I don't know what other word to call it, right? It's a quiz, but kind of. Like, what do you think would be a good quiz question from the stuff that we have learned so far? Hmm? 
Okay. What would you say? What's the difference between liabilities and expenses? Exam name some examples. Except I I don't know, you gotta put yourself in my shoes though. I want it to be relatively easy to grade. I suppose so. What are you thinking? She, he's just laughing at me. What is an account? It's interesting. It's very interesting. You all want to do definition. You know, my instinct is not to do, ask you a definition. My instinct is to ask you, what is the format of the balance sheet? Or what is the format of the income statement? That's my, I would say that would be my instinct, right? math because that's really kind of a higher order knowledge right can you can you define can you define that with uh i mean can you describe the balance sheet without knowing the meaning of some of the words i mean you kind of can right you can you can add you can memorize it a little bit but <clears throat> rather than asking you to just define what is an asset this asks you to know three things, not just one. So this will probably be the group. Hey, anybody else got a question, comment, concern, random thought? Carson Spaulding. Carson's not here. Emma's here. What question do you have for me? Oh, let me get closer so I can hear you. You can't, you didn't hear. Am I not talking loud enough? You are writing. And so what is your question? What are what? Between? Between what? Remind me. Well, you, I know you just said it, but remind me. It's it's a matter of who is the difference between accounts payable and salaries payable and notes payable is who is owned the who is owed the money. Notes payable, that money is owned to a oh not owned, I keep saying that word, is owed to a bank and is usually due more than a year from now. Salaries are due to employees and accounts payable is due to usually like a supplier. Okay. So, so it, it really just describes the difference. The, I mean, they're all IOUs. They're all represent money that we owe because they're all liabilities. They just differ based on who is owed that money. Is that helpful? Yeah. <clears throat> so let us move on. I think we're moving on to the next section now. Actually. I'm not sure how big of a jump that is in you all's uh, stuff. Let's talk about financial statements. How are we doing? Well, yeah. I'm about ready to call it, I think. Um, what time do we get out of here? Huh? 2.05. We got 15 minutes. <sighs> August, what is the uh, format of the balance sheet? Jared, what is the format of the income statement? Yes. And actually, if I would written it a little, I wrote it this way because I was defining concepts. So profit is the concept I wanted to describe. The format of the income statement would change the order. It would be revenue minus expenses equals profit. Okay? Because <clears throat> the biggest number on the financial, the biggest number on the income statement is revenue. 
<clears throat> usually the second biggest number would be expenses and then the smallest number would be profit. Okay. Um, that's not a bad place to stop because we still have, I was just looking ahead. <clears throat> We've got financial statements. And then some more stuff. I think this is a, a nice, nice, good, a good, nice place to stop. And so again, let's review just one more thing, one more set of things though. Veronica, what's the format of the balance sheet? Assets equals liabilities plus equity. Assets equals liabilities plus equity. Maxon. Maxton, my apologies. Maxon, what's an asset? Bang. Shoot, bang. What's an asset? Let's kind of make sure we know what those things mean, and then I'll let you go. What's an asset, Maxon? Sorry, I total resources, total resources of the company. So sorry, I did kind of give you a little bit of a false alarm there. Joseph, what's the liability? Mount owed to creditors. And what is equity, Landon? Come on, man. That is a good thought. What is equity, though? This is a great question to make sure you all know it. That's part of it, but not all of it. Ryan, what is equity? Yeah, this is actually a great question in this context. I didn't realize I was being quite this tricky, but let's make it clear. One way to define this is simply as assets minus liabilities, right? This must hold true. It is assets minus liabilities equals equity, but, it, but conceptually it represents yeah, I mean, in a very real sense, that's what it is. It's assets minus liabilities. Common stock represents ownership. This is accumulated profit. This um, is sometimes a plug based on everything else. So kind of, it, it, it doesn't have one clear uh, definition other than it is stereotypically the resources of the organization that are free to be distributed. That is probably the best definition. Let me see what I've got. Let's see if I, what did I tell you all? What did I tell you? For stockholders equity. Yeah. What did I tell you? I, 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 yeah. Owners claims to resources. So what that means is uh, conceptually, this is the money like this is the extra money, right? We've got assets, we have liabilities. If we used our assets to pay off all our liabilities, how much would be left to give to the owner? Conceptually, that is what equity is. So mathematically, it's assets minus liabilities. Conceptually, it's much the same thing. How much stuff, if we take all our assets, to use them to pay off all, all of our liabilities, how much stuff would be left over to be distributed and given to the owners if we just liquidated the company right now? Liquidating meaning we turn the whole company into cash. How much cash would there be to give to the owners? That is what equity is. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Good. So this time for real, don't forget all the cool stuff you learned today, and we'll see you on Thursday. And I hope to see, I hope those of you who are sick come back uh, feeling better.